Hello and welcome to Vintage Magazine Monday, Rod and Custom, May 1957. What we got here, we got auto shows coast to coast. They cover a few auto shows and of course some of the cars involved. The how to do it, grill and taillight conversions for all cars. Always a staple in the custom car world. And our cover car is this gorgeous Section 50 Olds. Rocking the candy apple red. Some nice white accents. Sharp looking cruiser there. So let's get on in. Of course, we got some ads in the front cover. We got our index or table of contents. Here's my little preview. Catch it there. Starting line there is the dream truck in one piece on the trailer. For those that know. Great little read there, how they are going coast to coast with the dream truck, checking out the shows, and of course we're seeing the show coverage afterwards. Nice little read. Letters to the editor, always fun read. Some people upset, some agree, some disagree. Oh, fun to read. Here we got JC Whitney. Shut up and take my money. All sorts of cool accessories. A little winking cat. Got some fender trim. Upholstery trim. Outside tailpipes. Chrome plated lake plugs. Tail light kits. Got overriders. All sorts of cool stuff. How do you choose? Got some teardrop trim lights. Lots of neat stuff. Next page, we got even more stuff to spend your money on. Cruiser skirts. This air scoop. I don't know that I've ever seen one of those in person. I may have to Google that one and see what they look like. Got a little shrunken head. Of course, we got some more skirts. Quad conversion for your 57. All sorts of neat accessories. Hollywood wolf whistle. Runs off of the intake manifold so it must be a, a vacuum type whistle kind of interesting all sorts of fun unusual novelties found a classic custom in our coverage car it is in black and white we had these all weren't in color again that bright red candy Looking sharp. Inside displays a black and white Naga hide covered interior. Seats, panels, white buttons. Lowered the seats by removing the adjustment tracks. Got the, the trunk shows large expanse of uncluttered deck lid with outcast plaque neatly secured. On top of stock bumper, dual pipes extend from underneath the stock taillights. Rest in normal position, though several inches lower, often giving the untrained observer a feeling of complete bewilderment. Underside of hood reveals modified Olds engine complete with Winfield cam, 56 old heads and valve train and topped off with a fourth row carburetor and bonnet type air cleaner, striping of the dashboard and strange walking eyeball on the horn button is by local artist Von Dutch. Dodge Royal Lancer hubcaps and white wall tires are finishing touches to this classic custom. Got all the right names. Winfield Von Dutch. Auto shows coast to coast. Starting off in Sacramento, California. Nice look at the show floor. View shows two of the three partitioned rooms of the display building. Participants came from all over Northern and Southern California to exhibit their cars for the people of the capital city. In foreground is a very wild 56 Chevrolet flamed and striped by Dean Jeffries of Los Angeles, who spent the three days happily practicing his painting art on rods and customs and taking part in the show. Sweet looking Chevy there. Beautiful 27T is painted fire engine red, has red and white Naga Hide interior, full race 320 cubic inch GMC engine, Model A bumpers, sealed beam headlights, and later chassis with Dago axle, 
and 44 hydraulic brakes to finish off the job. Down here, Mercury from Bay Area has had a complete facelifting. The shortened Mercury center grill bar is all that remains of the once stock front end. Headlights are Frenched and parking lights are mounted in recessed front fenders. Hand formed gravel pan is Frenched to the fenders and gives a massive look. Lots of eye candy in this week's episode. Up top, we've got a Deuce 3 window. Is the first one in the area to sport quad headlights. Motive power is provided by an Olds V8. Coupled to a stick shift transmission, paint is bronze metallic. With entire front end running gear all chromed. Down below, Joe Balian of San Francisco produced beautiful custom mercury with aid of fiberglass. Chrome steel tubing forms grill-like panel below deck lid. Taillights and backup lights are mounted neatly and logically above bumperettes. Great builder there. Of course, many of you guys know this one. Fabulous custom 56 Chevrolet pickup is chopped, sectioned, has quad headlights, custom bed, television, telephone, hi-fi system, and is valued at $17,000 by owner George Barros of Los Angeles. Really great truck there. Another pickup, a 55 Chevy passenger car to custom pickup truck was route taken by Joe Balian of Bay Area. Fiberglass was used extensively to change the sedate sand to a hardy hauler with advertising grill. There's a Balian name in the grill. Cool. Tri-5 El Camino conversion. Moving on to Manhattan, Kansas. Another look over the show floor. Above left, the 30 model A Roadster has been channeled and uses Dago axle for further drop. Brake and clutch pedals are mounted overhead style with clutch being operated hydraulically. Above right is a 34 competition Roadster built from five window coupe and mounted on 40 Ford type chassis. The nice ones are there. Low down 55 Plymouth uses trim and paint design from Big Sister DeSoto, keeping it all in the family. Taillight lenses are 55 Chrysler, neatly tucked into fender tips. Pipes exit through the bumper. Very rare thing is this Pontiac V8 engine for dragster power. Chassis is well constructed, featuring hoodily dampened torsion sprung Ford rear axle. Body is natural finish aluminum. Ford front axle is drilled to reduce unsprung weight. Adapters permit use of four Stromberg two-throat carburetors on a dual four-throat manifold. Interesting setup. This one's been kind of half, half decide. All out to go. This Ford hauler has a metal panel in place of the old grill combo. Front brakes have been removed and cycle tires and slicks are used. Old's rocket blows through huge headers. Sparkling chrome and brilliant lacquer attracts the crowds to this Kansas City beauty. 360 cubic inch Oldsmobile is new power coupled to LaSalle gearbox for positive action. Overhead theme extends even to the clutch and brake pedal mounting. Mercury grill shell is new home for narrowed 54 DeSoto bar. Any resemblance to a sheep lake falling of established traditional customizing ended with the use of Studebaker headlight rings, nicely blended to Chevy fenders. Got all the show. Something new in custom hubcaps is the use of spun aluminum discs built primarily for the Bonneville and other top speed competition on a show car. Studebaker trim blips are used for accent. Bet Moon never thought it would come to this when he first made them. Show and go hubcaps. As in all big rod and custom shows, lots of fabulous interiors were found in this Midwestern cavalcade. Some of the more outstanding cars had padded dashes, upholstered consoles, steering wheel covers. Practical idea was exhibited by one car that had tools arranged in zip down case on underside of deck lid. Special trunk interiors are often outstanding as a passenger compartment. Make ideal cars for sneaking into the drive-ins. Mildly chopped top with windshield laid back presents clean proportion 
appearance on conservatively styled Ford Tudor. Plymouth Grill has solid appearance, updating styling, several reels, crest line top saves metalwork. Now over to Fort Wayne, Indiana. Partially completed cars are to be found at every rod and custom auto venue. The very nature of the hobby of changing cars to suit oneself decrees that a slow process is in order. This 32 Roadster, typical, in primer, not yet upholstered, yet clearly showing the hours of work spent in its construction. The deuce demonstrates to the viewing public the inventive nature of the auto minded young Americans from one coast to the other. Flame job here. Flaming Chevy car displays cleaned up design as a result of removing the parking lights, excessive ornamentations and emblems, then substituting the 57 grill centerpiece for 55 model egg crating. Fire at auto shows as getting commonplace with flame designs growing from campfires to roaring and foreigners. Dice too are as common as Las Vegas crap tables. Another converted pickup. Harry looking rig is a result of converting a 37 Cadillac 7 passenger sedan into wild pickup. Standard of the world has Ford bed and rear fenders, which is good styling bit. Ford at right displays engine through peekaboo hood framed with windshield trim. Grill is 54 Chevy. You mark below. Has 55 Ford Park lights mesh, 53 Buick side trim molding brakes paint to balance the chop top. Two examples of extreme channeling are seen on Ford Coupes 10 years apart and vintage. The five window is way down low. Gold and white Ford below was well done. Details will appear in Rod and Custom in an upcoming, upcoming issue. The above 36 Ford convertible retains best features of original styling. It is made contemporary by the use of smooth tire cover, gas door, blended gravel pan. The right 51 Ford Coupe has excellent taste by virtue of radius wheel openings. Later model tail markers mounted low and backup lights in tips of the wind splits. Side striping is shorter. Engines are always a crowd pleaser at the car, car shows. A strikingly painted block with plenty of chrome plated nuts, bolts, accessories will gather interest from novice and enthusiasts alike. Buffed aluminum heads, manifolds, rock arm covers, long sweeping exhaust headers, and several carburetors exemplify the essence of hot rodding. Many top shows give awards for best appearing engine placed on display. The GMC 6 Holer here was but one of many outstanding mills shown to the enthusiastically crowd. Hartford, Connecticut. Shot of the show floor. You can just see the, the truck poking out there. Talk about this one here, the 33 Henry built shown below. Original fenders and running boards are used. The body has been moved rearward to compensate for the channel and the hood was lengthened to fill the gap. The top now features all steel construction. Basic design of the five window is left. All changes serve to enhance the original character rather than destroy it. Contrary to normal jazz it up for the show procedure, the tires are functional appearing black walls. Unfortunately, engine was not moved back, which would change the weight distribution and substantially improve handling. Looks very uh, Mercedes European. Up here. Not radically unlike its West Coast counterparts, this 32 Roadster is lacquered, chrome, and upholstered to the hilt. Firewall, rear axle housing, etc. all went the glitter trail. Even onto the brake lines, owner is obviously a good target for polished salesmen. 50 Ford became a croucher following radical sectioning job. Merck front bumper and pan complement front end, which has hooded lights. Deck lid was trimmed off 
to fit stock lower panel. Trim used for paint separation is from 55 Pontiac. Retention of the well-designed, those stock hubcaps is rare. Lots of beauties here. A 34 tub. Competition 27T. The blown flathead flames. Good looking unit there. 55 Chevy has undergone minor modifications, emerging with completely new personality. Longer look is attained by add additional of Continental kit and the extending of the rear fenders. Casters underneath the rear bumper prevent hang up on driveways. Rear sight is a channeled 34 Chevy Coupe highly chrome big GMC engine is coupled to long arm stick shift for rapid motivation. 36 Ford spare tire covers are used for the fenders. 36 Ford in the background is further proof of Eastern enthusiasm for the classic models. You love the, the Chevy Coupes. I wish there was more of them. The Buick Beauty. That is a fantastic looking car. Again, more that needs to be done in scale is the mid to late 50s. Other GMs, Buick Olds, Pontiacs. Forward rake is aided by stock sweeping spear. The dominating line when car is viewed from this angle. Since door handles and portholes have been neatly ash canned. Striping accentuates sculpture line just behind the door. Outside pipes add to length. Just a perfect looking Buick. Bill Gerald's Buick gets the California tilt from deep 7.5 inch drop up front. Mild 5 inch drop aft. Reworked A-frames and coil springs did the job forward while blocks were used behind. 56 Buick taillights on the 55 fenders help update the car. Corvette bars perched on the grill mesh are a neat addition to otherwise unimaginative front end Buick boasted in 55. French headlights use Ford chrome lined rings. Color of car is jet black. Conservatively modified cost approximately $1,000. It's just a, a great looking car. Definitely a fan. One Dark Time by Gerald Road. If you guys want to read a story, and some pictures to start it off. I'll do pause and read. Taillight swap for the 56 Chevy. Simple yet effective restyling at home. Pair of lenses from 55 Lincoln. The lenses are not cut or reshaped in any way, but a piece of clear loose sight has been cemented across the backside. As shown on the lens at the right, note the notch cut into the added piece for clearance around the taillight bulb. Gives it a nice new look. A little cleaner than the multi-bulb. More taillights. Take your pick and do it yourself. A custom Thunderbird displays modified rear fenders containing 55 Lincoln lenses topped off by wire mesh fins to add symmetry to the fender bumper design. You got a 56 Chrysler units are recessed into extended and reshaped Ford fenders. Far right, wider look is attained by addition of the French 54 Chevy taillights. Mercury rear fenders show extensive reworking in form of slight fin and V-shaped opening form with steel rod. Perforated metal blocks the 56 Buick lenses. Ford fender wind split was extended to fill concave portion of French 56 Olds lights. Right, the 55 Plymouth taillights sit at stock angle in the recontoured Merc fenders. Good looking tail options there. How about some grill swapping for the 49 to 51 Ford? 
These are the parts needed to swap left 51 Ford, top 56 Chrysler grill bar support. Go from that to something like that. Definitely changes the front end of that one. Distinctive and different. 49 Ford is brought up to date with the addition of 55 Ford grill, 52 Chevy parking lights. Concave mesh was bent to tighter radius at the ends to conform to size. And front fenders below headlights were reshaped to facilitate the parking lights mount. We got a straight steel tubing with recessed V-bend in center as basis for interesting grill of 51 Chevy fenders and hood or rework to give unusual flared opening. Make the 55 Dodge Center grill bars fit into an otherwise stock Ford grill arrangement. This combination gives a pleasing and original look with a very minor modification. Here we got a highly modified Merc front end displays cavernous maw with 56 Puma center grill bar joined to extended front fenders. Grill shell is hand form and French to the hood fenders and also the gravel shield. And there's a unique one. Nash Rambler grill resides in 55 Ford hauler. Front fenders and original shell have undergone much changing so that this novel grill complete with self-contained headlights will fit. Good stuff. The Golden Deuce. The decision to build a roadster. Pair of 97s atop the, the wine manifold. Feed fuel into a 269 flathead. Valve action is controlled by a Harman Experimental Cam. Note the special header. Only 10 pair were made by Ford Motor Company during the 36 for Indianapolis use. Those are rare today. Hood panels from 33 Chevy. Add a quaint touch to what is otherwise an entirely Ford car. Neither channeled nor severely dagoed. The deuce gets flashy look from bright yellow color and tasteful use of chrome plate. That's good taste. Definitely a good choice with the 32 hood. 32 Chevy hood. Touch and go. Simply install, install the new moon throttle. Give you the whole how-to, odds and ends, little helpful tips. Got a stuck cap, make a little slide hammer with some string. Black Flame from Iowa. Things a monster. Definitely a Seldom do you see customizing enthusiasts tackle one of the larger cars for the restyling purpose, but that is what Jack Krabs of Bettendorf, Iowa did some four years ago. He and his family liked to travel, and they wanted to ride in a solid comfort with plenty of room for luggage, so he chose the long-wheeled 48 Buick Roadmaster for his restyling project. Originally, the car was a four-door sedan, but he wanted two-door. He completely redesigned the interior and exterior, leaving out the rear door, widening the top as much as eight and a half inches at the front, making it removable and enlarging the trunk compartment. The project took three years to complete with a total of over 3,000 hours expended. You can kind of see a kind of a full width roof line, huge trunk. Definitely plenty comfortable space. Won't be so bad to road trip in that. Tuning for competition on a chassis dyno, part six of hopping up the Ford overhead valve. We got the blown bird on the chassis dyno. Pretty cool little instrument panel of that chassis dyno. That's a great shot there. Couple of birds going at it. Oh, that's a nice background. Talking about tying down the back end. 
the air fuel meter and the exhaust. Very cool to see the some very early instrumentation and tools. More shot of that blown bird. Out of the 48. Albuquerque is the place for a lot of dry desert climate. A few 53 DeSoto convertibles and one Leith Mitchell bringing the latter two together provides an interesting combination which goes something like this. The DeSoto's hood and deck ornamentation have been removed and the remaining holes carefully filled and made smooth once more. 55 Chevy headlight rims are fitted to the modified DeSoto fenders. The original chrome sides deleted. The grill was formed from electrical wiring conduit tooling and then took a trip to the nearest chrome platers. Top down. Living and working within a stone's throw of the Hoover Dam, one would imagine all interest would be centered on this massive, complicated structure. However, it ain't so. Not for J.D. Walker and his 54 custom Ford convertible, anyway. That's a great... Simple trim, little exhaust. Nice looking pair of drop tops. More letters. You guys want to read some more letters? At last, a low cost kit for sports cars. A little chassis there. Off the sketch pad. I'm going to try to read. Pause and read that. And just to the last few ads the air and sea of course if you guys enjoy that give you a moment to catch those if you want to a little bit more with the blown bird on the dyno cool picks and that'll do her Learn back pressure always another good read in the magazine tire performance of the day that'll wrap it up for ron custom may 1957 as always if you make it to the end i much appreciate it and we will see you next time